Good morning. It is February 23rd, 2024, and this is episode 86 of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast, a podcast for dreamers, by a dreamer, stand-up comedian, and actor. Paul Green here, sharing with you my dream journey as it unfolds in real time on a daily basis. And I'll tell you, I am just in the thick of all kinds of interesting uh, pushes and pulls and ups and downs. Uh, Those of you following on a daily basis um, are probably aware of a very uh, disappointing experience I had over the weekend, which I am still processing if this is your first time uh, listening You might have to go back and listen to a couple of episodes because I've been talking about it almost to the point to where it's about time that I start not talking about it anymore. You know, there seems to be that, you know, you never want to be that person who like (laughs) has the thing happen and then it gets to the point to where everyone who talks to you and they ask how you're doing, like you just can't help but be like, well, I'll tell you how I'm doing. I'm still mad about this, blah, 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 or whatever it is. Or you get to the point to where like, no matter what the conversation is about, somehow you are just enabled to do anything else other than redirect the conversation to keep talking about it. You know, maybe, uh, you know, somebody who just went through a divorce or, uh, you know, had some, you know, something happen at work, you know, they, they got wrongfully fired or wrongfully passed over for a promotion or, uh, you know, uh, were the victim of a rear ending where the people didn't stop and sped away and now they're stuck with the insurance bill. You know, there's just all those kinds of like life nuances and and they can really become pervasive and i think like anything there's there's both the extremes and trying to balance them there is the extreme of well i don't ever talk about anything that's going on in my life and i i keep everything uh under the chest and then there's the i talk about everything and don't let stuff go on the other extreme And I'm probably starting to get right on the edge of, yeah, it's maybe time to let this go. Not in terms of necessarily forgiving or um, reconciliation, but definitely in terms of, I've talked about it enough, I've shared what has happened to numerous people who all very much agree that the way that I was spoken to and the way that I was treated was absolutely inappropriate. And as one friend said, they sound like controlling (laughs) douchebags. That knee seems very unflattering. I'm wearing shorts. Just got very self-conscious about having my knee in the frame. Those of you listening, uh, you were spared having to see my bare knee and shorts on the uh, YouTube video. So I am feeling much more at peace. I think I've expressed all of the anger. I've expressed all the rage. Um, You know, I have screamed at the top, literally at the top of my lungs, which is actually why my voice is a little hoarse because a couple of days ago in my car, I got wrapped up in, I don't know if, I think I talked about this. I don't know if you all do this, but sometimes I will picture or imagine myself having a conversation with somebody um, who isn't there. (laughs) I'm not schizophrenic. It's um, some sort of like a visualization to where I'm, I'm imagining a conversation with them that either potentially could happen in the future, or I'm replaying a previous conversation and I'm replaying it differently. Like, oh, well, what if I had said this? Or what if I had acted this way? And 
sometimes I will get so involved in that fantasy. And I don't mean fantasy as in I'm wishing for it. I just mean fantasy as in it's imagined. It's in my imagination. But then sometimes I will actually start talking out loud. Um, this seems to happen a lot when I'm in my car. So the other day I was on the freeway and I was imagining me um, seeing the uh, individuals who have drastically um, upset me. Drastically upset me? Does that make sense? And I caught myself on the freeway just driving and next thing I know I'm just hurling the most aggressive, loud profanity just screaming at them in my imagination although out loud I was actually talking and yelling and my kind of threw my voice out that is how incensed I am at the treatment I received so I am I think I've Frost, uh, you know, I've let all that out now, and I'm not really feeling that level of anger these last couple of days. I have settled back down into my normal, more stoic, more peaceful, more ambitious state, and very much just ready to to move on and see what's next and start consciously thinking about them and the situation less and less and less and just willing to move on with my life. Um, and just moving forward in complete gratitude for how many people I do have in my life who actually do love me and respect me and treat me well and with dignity and only want... Like, I just know that they are only actually interested in what's best for me and are willing to invest in what's best for me without demanding anything in return or, you know, demanding contracts or non-competes or policy manuals and all of this, you know, bullshit. It's like, oh, wow, they just care about me and are just interested in helping me be successful and Likewise, I'm interested in helping them them be successful. I've been talking regularly with um, somebody I just met like two weeks ago. I literally met her two weeks ago at an open mic. And every day we're, we're checking in and she's starting to pursue stand-up comedy. I'm helping with her stand-up comedy and she's, she's really genius at marketing. I actually had her on the podcast about a week and a half ago, my friend Sarah. And there's absolutely no friction and there's no, there, there's no manipulation. There's no control. There's just, hey, how can we help each other? And, um, and I've received, um, uh, several messages from people who I've talked to who know the situation, who have just been so gracious and, other than that, I actually haven't really talked to a lot of people. And aside from the podcast, which, you know, I don't I don't have a lot of viewership, so it's not like I'm, you know, millions of people have heard this story. So it's been good to have so much support, have so much understanding, have so much validation, at least enough to go you know, I'm not the crazy one here, right? Because sometimes I am the crazy one. Um, and I always want to be open to critique and feedback. And uh, no, Paul, actually, you're a little off on that one. And I do have close friends who serve that purpose in my life. For that exact same reason, they actually only want what's best for me. And if I'm actually missing something or behaving in a manner that is not helpful to me, they're willing to go, Paul, you're nuts right now. I still can remember a good a good buddy of mine. Um, I was in a, a bad relationship about a year and a half ago. And um, when I got out of it, 
uh, you know, I was starting to do the whole re, uh, not rebound, but like she was still reaching out. And then I was actually starting to be like, oh, well, maybe I should get back with her. Which, if you knew the circumstance, is just the most idiotic, um, uh, mindset that I could have possibly had. And I still remember just talking to, to my buddy, you know, at dinner one night and he just like, Paul, you're nuts. I'm like, what? You're nuts. What the heck do you think you're doing? And he just had to be like, huh? And again, this is a buddy of mine who wants nothing from me, but what is best for me. And, and I for him. And so I am so grateful. I have been also reflecting a lot on my guest yesterday, Elizabeth Pitt, who is just an angel in my life and is so smart and so wise and so compassionate and ambitious and hardworking and just so full of love and compassion for me and for people in general. And I'm still just blown away that she's a friend of mine. Uh, um, if you listen to the podcast yesterday, she was in the C-suite of this company I used to work for, the chief customer officer. And I messed that up yesterday. I called her a vice president. She was not the vice president. She was the chief customer officer, CCO, yo. And, you know, it's had this incredibly successful business career. And I just kind of look at myself as a schlub. And yet... We we have had some of the most intimate, um, deep co conversations and connection. And I, I mean, I'm just so grateful for that and for her and for other people like that in my life. And we just had the most incredible conversation yesterday, and I've still been reflecting on it a lot. And one of the things that she said that has really challenged me, well, she said a couple of things that really challenged me and challenged my belief systems and my limited mindset. But first of all, she said, I think 90% of people get their dreams. I just, that one I was going like, really? It seems like dreams are this sort of statistical anomaly. And she put some qualifiers on there, but she just said, yeah, if you, if, if it's really what's calling to you and you're all in 90%. And I've been thinking about that a lot, a, a lot. And then she had also talked a lot about belief and how She, well, she had told the story about her dream when her dream shifted from more of a have success in business dream to, no, I actually want a romantic partnership and I need to invest in that and invest time and make some sacrifices. You need to sacrifice the career a little bit to find um, the romantic partner. And... She talked about that moment of doubt when just one day she just, you know, just was like, ah, this isn't going to happen for me. I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not worthy of whatever it is. And um, told a very touching story about um, going to, I, I couldn't quite make out the place that she was discussing somewhere. It felt kind of Europe-ish. <laughs> I'm so bad at geography. She kept mentioning in this place as though it's like a common place and I was just like uh-huh yeah that place I totally know what you're talking about but it it seems to be one of those sort of um holy uh locations on earth you know sort of like a Vatican or the Taj Mahal or 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 whatever um that has a religious significance the welling wall it, it felt like one of those um you know where people go and they have a, a you know, a spiritual epiphany and she went and did and 
it reminded me of a spiritual epiphany that I had had a couple of years ago that involved a conversation with a deceased relative. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly cynical when it comes to spiritual things and anything that also starts to also bleed into religion or religiosity or dogma or anything like that. But, you know, I had that experience and it felt like it was a spiritual visitation from a relative of mine who had passed away and, um, you know, and, and I'm out here and I'm, and I'm, and I have this big audacious dream, which just seems so unlikely for me, for anyone little yet little old me and all of the things working against me. You know, I didn't really start pursuing comedy until, I mean, I, I started improvising with the troupe that I am now no longer uh, associated with. Um, I started really with them in about 2008. I didn't start doing, so I was already, in 2008, I was probably, so what was that, 16 years ago? I'm 42 now. So what is that, 26, 27 years old, maybe? So I'm already halfway through my 20s, and that's when I started. And it's, you know, most comedians, most actors, they're starting in their teenage years. You know, I think Dave Chappelle moved to New York when he was like 14 or 17 or something like that. Um, you know, Adam Sandler, all of these, like, comedic actors, Jim Carrey, um, Oh, they all moved to LA and New York when they were really, really young and started pursuing their, their dreams. I didn't even know that pursuing dreams was possible until I was 34. I moved to LA when I was 34 years old. It's like, I'm already a dinosaur out there. And I moved out there with zero prospects, almost no real talent, no resume other than I had done a bunch of improv at this theater and, you know, a commercial here or there. And I had about a year of stand up comedy under my belt. And yet I'm going out there and I'm competing against other actors and other comedians who have been pursuing comedy and acting for a decade, for 15 years, 20 years. Um, So, you know, it's just so audacious. And now here I'm 42 and, and still in this game. Um, and so it, it does feel very much like the odds are stacked against me or odds that are already unbelievably unfavorable, even for people with everything going for them. Yeah, I can't tell you how many, you know, young, beautiful actresses and young, handsome actors and young, funny stand-up comedians. I mean, ju just by the dozens that I have even met. And, you know, I, and I'm not a big networker. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very popular or, uh, you know, I didn't have a huge social circle out in Los Angeles. And, and there were so many. So many. So, you know, Elizabeth talking about how she had gotten to a point to where it just seemed like it wasn't possible for her. You know, the age that she was at, her where, where she was at in her life, that a truly beautiful romantic partnership would be available to her and she just had sort of resigned that maybe it wasn't written in the cards. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. And then it happened. And so I have been doubling down on my faith and my belief in myself and in whatever God or God or goddesses 
have whatever influence they do or don't on this world and um faith that that spiritual interaction that I had a couple years ago and the serendipitous events that happened directly following that mean something and that it means something that I have that I'm still doing this and going for it for some reason because it just seems so ridiculous and unlikely <laughs> and yet here I am and moving forward with belief that that turning point in my life is available to me a turning point that transforms my current life as it is which by the way is amazing and I am so grateful for it almost to the point to where it feels guilty to be like oh yeah well thanks for this but um can I have a little more please thank you um hey daddy um thanks for buying me a Porsche but I really wanted the pink Porsche can I have two okay honey the heck was that I don't know what that analogy was clueless maybe um Clueless esque, you know, w wealthy father, spoiled teenage daughter. I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm the uh, spoiled teenage daughter of the universe that I've had such tremendous fortune, even with all the ambition and unfulfilled dreams that I currently have. I also recognize how incredibly fortunate and how grateful I am for the life that I do have and for the friendships and relationships that I have. And the people in my life who are just so on my team and the circumstances that I'm that I'm living in that are just such great circumstances I mean my gosh you just look around the world and go my goodness there's about a 95 percent chance my life could just be absolutely horrific right now for all sort of circumstances that would be totally out of my control. And here I am hanging out in a room, filming a podcast and posting it on online and having the resources and freedom to travel. I'm flying to Missouri today uh, to do a show out there and to spend some time with an incredibly talented uh, comedian and influencer, Elizabeth Weikert. If you have not seen her stuff, go uh, look up Elizabeth Weikert on social media. She is just an incredibly um, gifted, energetic, beautiful human. And I met her at a comedy festival and really hit it off with her. Um, she allowed me to open for her when she toured to Arizona because she's starting to get a little bit of, of uh, traction with her social media presence. And then she asked me to fly out and do a show with her out in uh, Missouri. I mean, how cool is that? That like people are reaching out to me and, and giving me these opportunities and that they recognize some talent that I might be able to bring to the table and and they want to work with that. And there's no, uh, th there's no, it's just so sincere and so authentic and so genuine and beautiful. And, um, you know, those are the type of people that I will go the extra mile for. You know, I'm, I'm losing money because there's not a lot of budget for me to fly out there and you want to know I just don't care again I have the circumstances and the resources to actually lose money to go do a gig why am I doing the gig because that's my dream and that's what I love doing and and I do it all with the hopes that one day <laughs> there will be a turning point to where 
I am able to gig and have the income be so abundantly lucrative that then I will be in the position to um, support other performers and bring other performers along and actually pay them and just how cool would that be? And I hope like my dear friend Elizabeth that uh, just as she had her moments of doubt that it just would never be possible for her and then it happened that I will also have a similar experience of feeling so much discouragement over the years and fighting through and all of that and just wondering if I really will ever have that sort of turning point experience in my life and I'm just believing that one day it will happen. There will be that definitive oh yeah you you are the guy and because you are that guy uh, that's going to that's going to cause some drastic positive expanding adjustments in your life so my dear dear friends that is what is on my mind on this February 23rd, 2024, episode 86 of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. I hope your dreams are going out there. And then if you are in your moment of the long, dark night of the soul, that you are finding the encouragement and the belief systems to move forward and that you have those uh, beautiful friendships and relationships in your life by the people who really believe in you and um, are there to help you through it, encourage you, tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And that you wake up the next day and uh, keep moving forward with your dreams. So I love you all so much. Thank you for listening. I hope you're doing well. And I will check in with you tomorrow with another episode of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast, a podcast for dreamers by this dreamer right here. We'll talk to you tomorrow.